Um, reopen this meeting, and <clears throat> I'm going to give my little uh, instructions here. <laughs> So, uh, so you can start exactly at 11 o'clock okay. when you start your thing. <clears throat> We're ready. Okay, so um, this is the uh, interview uh, at 11 o'clock for Capeway Cannabis LLC, DBA Capeway Cannabis, 120 MacArthur Boulevard Bourne, Adult Use Marijuana Retail Establishment. So um, you'll have a half hour for your presentation followed by questions from the board um, and uh, you may introduce yourself and begin and just so everyone knows if you're going to speak you have to go to the microphone so that it can be heard on the board community TV welcome welcome good morning my name is uh, Kevin Howe I think most of you know me we've spent a little bit of time in the last year and a half together um, trying to come up with the right plan for the town of Bourne. Um, today I here representing Capeway Cannabis. Um, our project overview, we're proposing a, a marijuana retail store, uh, Capeway Cannabis at 120 MacArthur Boulevard. The picture you see here is of our store that's up and running in Carver, Mass. Um, we hope to bring the same type of vibe and feel to the town of Bourne that we've done in Carver. A little bit few facts about Capeway Cannabis. We're a locally family-owned business. As you can see right here, I, my wife Lori is here, my sister-in-law Michelle, and my brother Steve. Um, Capeway will be one of the few minority-owned marijuana licensees in Massachusetts, which is 100% woman-owned. The ownership and management of this team of the Capeway team are locals with immediate ties to the town of Bourne. We're not a big cannabis subsidiary. We don't have connections with out-of-state or multinational cannabis firms. We live proudly in Bourne, we are personally invested, and we care about the communities we work in. As I've said, uh, Michelle Howe is our president, Lori Howe is our vice president, and Steve is the COO. I handle regulatory uh, for, the for the group. Uh, also in this picture is one of our managers, Julie Bledren. Um, she works at our Carver store. A little background on our founders. Michelle's been a lifelong resident of Falmouth. She lives there with her husband, Steve, who is the CEO of Capeway Cannabis and grew up here in Bourne and has deep family ties here. Lori is the vice president of Capeway Cannabis. She also owns and operates Rapid Record Retrieval in Bourne for the last 23 years. Rapid Record Retrieval is a pre-employment screening company serving private companies and the government all over the country. Lori has also owned Atlantic Auto Wash in Bourne for the last 21 years. Lori lives here and has raised a family here in Bourne for the last 30 years. She lives here with me, who's been a resident of this town for over 50 years. T today we're here to talk to you about obtaining an HCA. Um, and w to get that HCA will help us get a license. That's our license for our Carver store. And that's what our, our goal is here today, is to talk to you about that. As I've said, in the state application process, uh, we're required to secure proper HCA with the town. We're required to go through thorough and detailed legal financial background checks into all of our owners, executives, and financial investors in the company. We're also, the state will also check on a detailed managing and operating profile highlighting the daily operations of the establishment, including detailed security plans and community impacts. These are easy things for us to do because we are up and running and we, we have an existing store. The proposed property is 120 MacArthur Boulevard. This property is within the approved marijuana overlay district by the Town of Bourne for recreational cannabis establishments. The proposed location will require planning board approval and the proposed location complies with the state mandate 500 foot buffer from a public or private school building. <coughs> Here's an overview of our location at MacArthur Boulevard and the existing building. We will be using, we won't change the existing footprint of this building. We will just be changing the appearance of it and we'll be creating a store and offices within it. As you can see, here's a layout and it's in our binder, uh, a little more in depth 
of what the store will look like inside. We'll have one entrance into the store where you'll have your ID checked. Then you'll walk on to our sales floor where your ID will be checked again before you make a purchase, and you'll exit through a separate entrance. We found um, in designing our stores that this is the best way to have people come into your store because one set of people are getting their IDs checked and then others are just trying to leave so you don't get a clog up at the door or anything else. It's a very easy flow and it makes it work very com comfortably for our customers. Per state law, we will have zero visibility. External signs will not use language to put or imagery of otherwise advertised in any way that suggests that the establishment is a pot shop or that marijuana is produced or available. No pictures of pot leaves or any other marijuana related imagery. No message boards or promotion signs that list marijuana products or prices outside the store will be shown outside the store. Absolutely zero visibility into the facility or the store from the street or the parking lot. At our, at our operation, all products will be, all products legally allowed by law and in full compliance with the state regulations are, which will be sold. We will also sell a small select inventory of non-cannabis dry goods, such as rolling papers and pipes and those types of things. As far as our production, testing, and storage, all products in all cannabis and other marijuana <coughs> products will be produced in accordance with mass law and regulations and sourced only from licensed marijuana distributors in Massachusetts. All products will have been tested by third-party analytical laboratories for potency, pesticides, heavy metals, molds, and other contaminants. All test results will be available to all customers. All marijuana products will be stored securely within an alarmed vault under 24-hour surveillance. No customers will have direct access to marijuana products. Some concerns have been about cash handling and those types of things. Capeway Cannabis will accept cash and debit cards. We expect that in the early months, operation will be about 50% transaction will occur in cash. That's what we feel like we are at, at our store in Carver right now. Like any such business, Capeway will employ a sophisticated cash handling procedure that will include comprehensive employee training, strict policies and procedures for how cash is counted, handled and recorded and stored. Cash collection will occur on a timely basis to ensure that no more than it's cash no more cash that is necessary for an ordinary course of business is kept on site we have regular pickups from our car services um, they change from day to day just so that we can fluctuate when they come um, but it's something that we do in our store we don't store very much cash so it's not a problem at all this is all you can also see a picture of the inside of our store here um, we try to promote a real relaxed many of you've been into our store and seen what it looks like a relaxed environment for our customers. As far as security, our establishment will provide security measures meeting or exceeding security requirements set forth by the state regulation 935 CMR 500, including but not limited to storage vault with restricted access, professional security systems, 24 hour HD video surveillance, on site security personnel, secure loading area in direct communication with the Bourne Police Department. As uh, this store is written up right now, there will be 23 cameras, there will be 10 door car readers, and 12 motion detectors. Um, that's a lot of cameras and protection for a small, less than 2,000 square foot space. Uh, we will also have six panic buttons strategically placed throughout the store that will ring directly down to the Bourne Police Department. Uh, we have these in our store in Carver right now. Uh, in the last two years that we've been open in Carver, we've had the police to our facility for an incident on site zero times. But I will tell you the police have been to our facility five times to collect camera information on incidents that happened around. We have a great relationship with the police department, the police chief in Carver, and the sergeants. Uh, we have a barbecue truck that sits in our parking lot on the weekends, and you can see their cruisers and some of them coming down and getting lunch during the day down there. As far as the impact on the community, the location will not constitute a nuisance to the community as defined by law. Our hours will be Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday, 9 to 6 p.m. The retail store will not produce any excessive exterior lighting, detectable odors 
or undue nuisances to disturb neighbors. Deliveries will be staggered and made during normal business hours. I you know the last group said that they take hours, uh, their deliveries sometime in off hours. In the two years we've been open, we've never had a delivery that wasn't during our normal business hours. And, and when I say normal business hours, typically between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. We, we've never taken a delivery after that time. Um, so I'm not sure why other companies would have to do anything different than that. The location is projected to host approximately two to 300 customers per day, about half what a normal fast food restaurant or coffee shop will do. The location, when it was first designed as a car wash, was built for four to 500 trips a day. So we'll be underneath the number of the initial approve, approval of that site. As far as compliance, no cannabis products shall be manufactured in any way nor packaged in such a way to direct appeal to the marketing towards children. All cannabis and other marijuana products will be packaged in compliance with child resistant safety regulations and be clearly labeled. If any of you have ever purchased any of our products, they're not only child resistant, they can be adult resistant to get into. <laughs> they're not easy. <laughs> Capeway Cannabis considers diversion prevention a top priority and will meet or exceed the state regulations to prevent diversion to the black market, especially to children. All employees will pass state background checks. Secure, security protocol will make the establishment one of the most secure buildings in the town of Bourne. In fact, when we met with the Carver police chief um, and went over our initial drawings with him for his approval, he had just built his police station two years prior and he looked at us and said, you have the most secure building in town, including my police station. So that tells you what kind of security we'll have in place. Access to marijuana products will be restricted to authorized personnel only and will require key card access. State compliant seed to sale tracking software will monitor the traffic of every cannabis product in the production chain. If some of you aren't familiar with the seed to sale. It's um, marijuana plants are tracked from when that seed goes into the ground to when it's then grown and cultivated, and whatever it gets cultivated as flour or a gummy, it is then tracked in that process till it comes into our store. It's received into our store with what they call a metric tag. We take that metric tag and put it into our system and it's tracked right out until it goes out the door. If it was forever, if there was ever to be a recall on a product or something like that, we would know typically who that person, when it was purchased or who purchased it. If any marijuana was being diverted and someone picked it up from a miner and it had uh, packaging on it, it'll clearly have packaging on it that says Capeway Cannabis, and we would be able to tell you by the barcode on that who purchased it and where it went. Uh, continuing with pre uh, prevention, customers must be 21 and have a valid state ID to enter the establishment. Age will be verified by inspection and by using industry standard technology. We use a scanner for everybody that comes into our store. Um, you have to, we turn away, if, you, if your license expired yesterday, we have to turn you away. We won't let you into the store. No person under 21 or without a valid state ID will be allowed in to enter the store or remain on presence, premise. I can give you a little for instance. Uh, our son just turned 21 and it wasn't until after his 21st birthday that he was actually allowed to go into our store for the first time. We take it very seriously. We have a lot of money tied up into these investments that it's not worth allowing one person underage to come into your facility. As I said before, the state compliance seed to sale tracking will monitor the traffic of every cannabis product right out to the point <coughs> of sale. No customer shall be allowed to purchase more than the legal limit per any visit to Capeway Cannabis. The legal limit is 28 grams one ounce a day per recreational customer. On-site consumption, Capeway Cannabis has a zero tolerance policy for on-site consumption. Any customer positively identified consuming marijuana products on site shall be immediately banned from the store for not less than one year and the incident will re be reported to the CCC. Security personnel and strategically placed security cameras will work to ensure no customer or employees are consuming marijuana on the premise, including in parking lot in, in parked cars. Positive impact. Capeway Cannabis will create dozens of high paying jobs with full benefits, especially for town of Bourne residents. 
We actually have um, Tony Amato, who is our manager, um, will be coming down from our Carver store and working here in Bourne. Tony lives in Sagamore with his wife Amalia, where they own a house and have a family. Um, he's been with us from the very beginning, and he comes with a great background in retail, spent 23 years at Shaw's, um, and does a great job for us. We're happy to have him coming down here to Bourne um, and bringing some real local people into, the into our operation here. We'll utilize local contractors for construction. Uh, the annual charity contributions to local nonprofit organizations focus on veterans and families, youth and drug prevention, environmental services, and community betterment groups. We currently at Carver, um, we work with Damien's Food Pantry in Wareham. We work with Shane's Food Pantry in, in um, Carver. We have plans to work with the Food Pantry here in Bourne. We work with a group called Carver Cares. Um, there's a director of Carver Cares, is Megan Quirk. She works directly into the Carver school system. And we, we attend all of her meetings. Actually, one of our staff, Elliot, was at their meeting, their monthly meeting yesterday. We do a lot of different programs with them, and I put some of these out. We uh, have some of these signs up in our store that say, keep it locked up, and we put these together with them. We also do some bag stuffing with different things. Uh, for our customers, we put them in their bags that they can take home, and it just tells them that you need to keep this out of the hands of children. We've also worked with them, and we supply what we call stash bags. Yeah. And at different events that we hold throughout the year, Carver Cares comes and sets up a booth, sometimes in our store or sometimes outside, and they talk to our customers as they're coming in about the importance. Um, we give these away free. These are bags that have a lock on them and everything else. They're odor resistant. They, they pull the odor in and that kind of stuff. And it's a program that we feel is working very successful. We reached out to the Bourne Alliance, uh, Substance uh, Free Alliance here in Bourne with Donnell Lonigan. We are on their agenda for November to go in and speak to them and show them a little bit about what we're doing in Carver and what we can do here in Bourne as well. Um, some of the other charities we work with, with uh, we actually we put our team together and we come down and do, we've already been part of a lot of the charities here in Bourne that help Bourne. We do the canal cleanup with the Corps of Engineers in the spring. We bring our team down and pick up trash along the canal. We work with um, Craig Poirier and his group, Homeless for the Holidays. We work also with the uh, Carver Night Out group. Um, some of those things, you know, we work with groups like Craig's group that we work with. When, and we've known Craig for a long time, and we donate turkeys when he asks us money, and we donate help to him. And one of the things he said to Steve and I was that, hey, you know, I really appreciate everything you guys do, and I understand if you don't want to do it, but I can't promote your name or anything because my, my, uh, there's a lot of children and youth involved in our program. And, you know, we came back to Craig and said, you know what, we really care about what you do, and what you're doing is good for our community. And it's not that important, and we don't do it because we want the promotion of it. We do it because we care about the community, and that's why, and that's what we do. Uh, actually, this weekend we're also sponsoring the um, the Lions Golf Tournament in Carver. We're one of the corporate sponsors of, of their organization. So I think a lot of you have seen me in the last. Two, year, two years, as I've said, you know my story, our story pretty well. We've got up and told it extensively. That's why I kind of kept this kind of brief. I think you have a lot of information from us. As I've said, many of you have visited our store. Uh, I'm happy to hear to answer any questions. At the end, I'd like to just give you a two-minute wrap-up on it as well. But at this time, if you have any questions for us, we're here. We're an open book. We're a small organization, but we're people that work in this industry every day. We're not projecting to work in it. We're not going to tell you what we're thinking we're going to do or what we might do. The things we talk about are things that we do on a daily basis. Any questions from the board? Um, Sure. Anne Marie. Um, <laughs> can you dive a little bit into about how you're going to, you know, attract and retain, you know, uh, employees from the community? And well, I know you have you 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 do um, <coughs> emphasize a lot on diversity and equity. We do we um, with respect to that. Is that, um, you know, again seasonal? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, so even where we are in Carver, we could tell you that we're, you know, it's not, Carver's not Cape Cod, but it is also a very seasonal town. Um, we do see our sales go up in the summertime, obviously, and they drop off a little bit in the wintertime. We've not 
ever had an issue where we've had to cut back on staff or even cut back staff hours. We, we plan accordingly that we make sure that we have an, enough staff um, on site that, that we've had no problems with that. We've, uh, we've never laid off an employee in two years. Um, all of the employees that are with us right now started with us two years ago. So we've retained them for the last two years. We think that we, you know, we have a great environment up there, a great culture. Um, we try to keep it fun. It, you know, it is a little bit of a fun industry. Mm -hmm. um, and, and by doing that and, you know, having good wages and good health packages and stuff, we've been able to retain and, and keep our employees. The other thing also is it takes a lot to bring an employee on. It's not a matter of fill out your W-9 and that kind of stuff and, hey, you're an employee, we'll see how you're doing. If you're not here in three days, no big deal. We spend a lot of time training them. We pay for their training. On an annual basis, we, we have to train them, but we also have to get them certified through the state, uh, through their background checks and all those things. So it, it's not something that you take lightly when you have an employee in this industry. It's not a simple retail job at Ocean State Job Lot where it might be a revolving door. That's not what it is. Mm -hmm. And what about for uh, local employees? Local employees will do the same thing that we did in, in Carver. We advertise locally. Uh, we had a job <coughs> fair back, geez, we had a job fair. And on one day, we had 75 applicants. Um, and, and from that, we were able to get a real diverse crowd. I think 35 or 40% of our employees live in, are from Carver. Um, we could go down the numbers of and we've broken them down because the CCC requires us to break them down, but mm -hmm. you know, we have a very diverse group, whether you know, LBGT, veterans, I think we have four or five <coughs> veterans that, work, that have working with us. Um, and we plan to do the same thing here in Bourne. We, you, know, you can only hire who comes, right. um, but we really take pride in looking at those who do come and in, in making sure that they're a good fit and making sure that they're part of the community. We want our customers to walk in and, and see Tony. Tony, who, uh, Amato, who was going to be the manager here, grew up in Carver. Uh, his dad, until <coughs> he just passed away, lived in Carver. His, his stepmom lives, still lives there. And we want, our we want our customers to come in and say, hey, Tony, how you doing? And know who they are. Um, we have a school teacher from the town of Carver that works for us. Uh, you know, she comes in, she's like, what's the difference between working here in a liquor store where some of my other counterparts work at? There's none. She comes in at 3 o'clock. You know, and she's funny because she's like, oh, my God, I had that. She's been in the school system for Carver for 25 years, and she's like, I had that kid in, in seventh grade or something like that. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're going to do the same thing here, here in Bourne is try to bring in people that we know. We want, to, we want our customers to be comfortable coming in and seeing people that they know. How many employees do you have? Are we at 16? 16, yeah. Some part-time, some full-time, um, mostly part-time. I think it's probably about 12 full-time and, and four part-time. And we're, like, you know, I think we're plus six, us. yeah, plus us. Um, we're 65% women at our store up there. Um, it's obviously with, we have two women running our company. It's a big priority of theirs, <laughs> which is okay. Melissa. Yeah, very quickly. Um, so I think, you know, it's great. I've, we've heard, you know, your plans, um, your security is really tight. And of course, we always work really hard in, your, in this industry to keep it out of the hands of youth. And I just, I'm kind of going to go back to the customers. Um, as I said, I've done a ton. I've tried to do my homework and visit different stores and sort of check rates and pricing. And I know that um, the medical industry, they're the people who are able to um, access that, it's tax-free, correct? Yes, they don't pay the tax. So time. with the retail stores, you know, some of these folks that would be, you know, tax-exempt under the medical are not under these, you know, the retail laws. So my thoughts were I've seen a lot of different stores where the same product is like double the price that than another store. So are you planning to, I know, um, um, the gentleman from earlier said that you know you really can't offer discounts and sort of that, but I know that they a lot of the facilities there are some, I've seen like buy one get one free yes, and in the, there, um, but there's been a lot of I've noticed there's a lot of difference in the same product with one town over being double the amount. So I just wanted to see like your plans are your plans to say you know sort of fair in the rates and sort of competitive with we, the yeah, neighbors we, who we, might be offering it much much less. We always feel. Um, you know, we're always going to be competitive because if we're not competitive, we're not going to get customers. And we do run different specials. Sometimes uh, there'll be certain days of the month that we have a special on eighths or something like that. Or mm -hmm. on a Tuesday, we do two for one, uh, buy one, get the second one at a different price and stuff like that. 
we're very constrained about what the state says that you can do. Yes. And <laughs> there are a lot of people out there that do things that they haven't asked the state if it's okay. And I think they're waiting to get told no. We, we take a different approach to that. We, we, you know, we've had uh, several inspections from the state, a couple surprise inspections that they've come through. Um, and those are the things that they've looked at. And one of the things that our inspector has said to us uh, in the last couple times that she's been here is, uh, you're one of the only groups that have ever had zero deficiencies every time we come here. We just, you know, it's not worth it for us. And we tell, you know, we talk to her, our inspector and we talk about security and, and she's, you know, sometimes she's like, I'm not trying to be a hard ass. And I'm like, you're not being a hard ass. You tell us where, where you don't think things are correct and we want to correct it. We don't want to have any security issues here. You know, we're just trying to run a successful business and, mm -hmm. and, and do it in the best way that we can. So as far as pricing, we'll be competitive because we have to. Um, the marijuana industry is in a, uh, in Massachusetts is in what we are calling a shaking out area and there are some companies selling stuff for way less than they should. We just don't feel that that's a good business practice and we probably won't do that. We, we're in a practice to be here for the long run and there's some retail stores out there that aren't. Yeah, yeah, I'm just curious because I, like I said, it was really, I was kind of shocked at like the differences. It's the same product, same brand, same amount double the price at one store as opposed to another one. So I said, you know, we want our people to shop here in Bourne, right? We want to get the customers to your stores and sure. all of that. So I was just curious and, on that. Sort and of. I think having three stores, you're going to have competitiveness right out of, of the course. gate. Of um, course. And, and that's really what's going to regulate your, your pricing and your competitiveness. I'm just curious. Let's take into the consumer for a minute there. I know we're all, you know, yeah, we, we have, have the, big, the big items, secure it, security that are, that are residents in the, you know, the parents are concerned about, but I know the consumers probably are wondering as well. So thank you for that. Yeah, and we have still, as I've said to you in the past, we have a lot of people from Bourne. We have a gentleman, Paul, who comes up a couple mornings. A month. He's usually there at 8 o'clock every morning, drives up from Pocasset, <laughs> yeah. and he comes in, and he was in this morning with his coffee and got, and got his, his, his what he was looking for and left. But, yeah, we, uh, you know, if we weren't running competitive prices, people like that wouldn't drive by three stores to come see us. Understood. All right. Thank you. That's it. Um, Jean, I guess a similar question about training. Who does, you know? What so we, um, who are we using now for training? Green Path. Green Path is a company that we use in 420 that we use, and all of our employees are required to go through that on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. um, besides, we have in-house training that happens, and if you, if in our packet, you'll see the long list of SOPs we have. We have an SOP for just about everything including sweeping the bathroom floor. Uh, so <laughs> it, it's pretty well detailed. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have a morning huddle every morning where we bring all our staff together and we talk about the different things and we talk about things that we sometimes, as most companies, need to improve upon and talk about things that we want to discuss with our customers. Uh, one of the, you know, our, it's just not the security and it's the knowledge of cannabis and being able to express that to our customers. And we feel that that's really an approach that we're very successful with is we have staff that's very knowledgeable. So when you come into our store, you have to re remember that. A lot of people coming into stores are new to it. And they're there whether it's they don't sleep at night, they have an ache here or anxiety or something like that. They want to be able to talk to somebody. And, and that's where we've done a lot of training with our staff to, to tell them the different types of CBD or CBN or THCA and things that can help them and benefit them. And by doing that, we have a lot of customers that, you know, return to us just for those things. Sleep products are one of our bigger products. We have a big group of people that just come in and buy three or four things of sleep because that's what they use it for and they don't want to come back every month or something like that. Uh, security retention or video retention. Um, on the cloud, you know, it, you say the police have come come in and uh, you know and ask for information. How far back do you how far back do you retain your information for? So it's required that we keep it for 90 days, but I think our system holds it for 115 or something like that. We have a little bit bigger system. It's it's a, obviously it's a big amount of storage. Um, we also our company it has 24 hour live person. Um, as I said, you know, we have 12 motion detectors. Um, they speak directly if there's ever an incident with the building, whether we've had things like spiders who can set some of these things off sometimes. And, <laughs> and, and phone call at 3 o'clock <laughs> Yeah, right. And um, we communicate with the police. We communicate with the fire. The fire department has a lockbox, a knockbox on our building. Uh, they can come into the building anytime that an alarm comes off, uh, goes off, and see what's going on. Um, we really haven't had any issues. We have Jesse Boyles, the, the fire uh, deputy fire chief, he comes into the store 
uh, on an annual basis and goes through everything with us. We've brought most of the fire department into our store before we opened so that they could see what the layout was and kind of get something in their mind. So if there was ever an emergency, we have a two floor facility there uh, in a basement and so that they could have a peace of mind of like, okay, I kind of know what this building looks like inside if it's filled with smoke and, and where we should go and what we should do. So, and we would do obviously the same thing here in Bourne, bring up any of the firemen that want to come in and take a look at the building and see what, see what it is, just to make it their job any easier if it was ever an emergency. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> can you, um, I, I just want to kind of understand the, the ownership, this so the ownership is Lori and Michelle, right. but then in your people that work there, you, you and Lori and Michelle and Steven and Anthony, you all like work there, but you're not all owners. No, Lori <coughs> and Michelle are the only owners of the company. We're 100% woman owned mm. business. Okay. And Steve and I, you know, we're lucky enough to get a paycheck and enjoy working with our spouses. So that's why we, I think that's why we do it. <laughs> Um, one of few that can do that, right? Yeah, it's right. you know what? It's we're, <laughs> we're both, we've all celebrated over 30 years of marriage. It's uh, we've we've we kind of think we figured it out. I could work with mine too, so that's a good thing. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, your location, which <coughs> is 500 feet away from the school building but does abut the school fields of the property can you talk about what you might do for screening just to make sure, sure. that the rear is is clearly sure. uh, we're, we're planning to put a fence up along the back our portion of our building that one is heavily wooded before you can see a, a field okay. in in a field that is hardly used let's say that it's one of the least used fields in the recreation uh, group but we plan to put a, a fence a, you know the, what the town will allow for a fence to go along that area in screening um, you know, we ran a car wash there for 21 years, and I don't think we ever had one high school person walk through the woods uh, or, or come through in any way for anything. It's just we're far enough away. We're almost 1,500 feet from the building. We're, we're a pretty good distance um, that, it's, that we don't see it being an issue in any way. We'll have cameras on that side of the building. As I, you know, our, our staff monitors those cameras all, all the time that we're there. If we were ever to see... Uh, you know, a youth or somebody come through that way, we would immediately address it. Okay. Amory, do you have another question? Um, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, a strict non-consumption on the premises. We do. Are you required to report that to CCC? We are. If we and go ahead. Sorry. Um, are you required to port, report it as well to the local PD, or is that just? Yeah, I heard that mentioned earlier that they would report it to the Bourne Police Department. Um, we're not required to do okay. that. And, uh, you know, I think, I don't think they would really want us to. I don't think it's a, something that, you know, a car driving away with someone smoking something, it's going to be something that they're going to put their efforts into chasing after or something like, especially if it's a, someone who's 21 years of age. Um, we are, but we do monitor that. We do have signs in our parking lot up in Carver mm -hmm. that's clearly state throughout the whole parking lot that no consumption is allowed on site. Um, I don't think we've, we've so your only requirement is to report to the CCC you that have no other <coughs> requirement to ban that individual from so you know, if we are if we do uh, find someone that has broken that we mm -hmm. would ban them for one year as we've stated in, in from mm -hmm. our premises and we would report that to the CCC we would be happy to if the Bourne police if that would make them feel more comfortable <coughs> to report that to them I, it's yeah, not a problem know. at all I don't know I just in, want to know if that was a regulatory it, uh, just reporting it to the CCC, to the CCC is, is a regulatory yeah. thing. And as I've said, we've yet to, you know, it, it's kind of like a liquor store. You don't see many people going out yeah. in the parking yeah. lot and <clears throat> cracking open vodka bottles and drinking it. Thank you. Melissa? Yeah, no, I'm good, I think. I think you've answered. I think your question sort of got me the answer. Jean? Um, just curious about the, the business uh, what you're going to be selling is what percentage of it is is flower vape product versus like accessories just um, accessories are a very small part besides rolling paper um, you know I'm gonna tell you you know those accessories that we buy I complain because we get stocked up on them sometimes and we don't turn them fast enough and that's what in business we need to do um, but it's less than 1% of our okay. sales okay. It, it's very minimal um, but we you know most of the uh, product that we sell uh, 
uh, right now I think we're probably about 60% flour and then it goes into the edible categories and then tinctures and, and drinks and those types of things. Peter? I'm all set. Uh, <clears throat> can you talk, um, so I asked the question before uh, to the prior people, you know, do you offer dissents to medical or for people with economic hardship? But I want you to combine that with an answer of how, how can you serve the um, people in the community who do have a medical need and do have a medical card? I mean, are they going to be able to no. get their needs met in your store? It, it, it's, we are not allowed to do that per state. So, so the discount, the or discounts or the non-taxing uh, yeah. of cannabis and that kind of stuff. We, we will only do what the state allows us. Mm -hmm. So if that's to change with the state and the state says, hey, okay, you know, because as we know, medical stores are closing. Um, a lot of people have moved, moved away from it. They're just not profitable. Um, and, and that's, that's just a fact of business. Um, if the state was to put some new regulatory information forward that would allow us to do that, we would absolutely comply. And, and heck, if that's going to bring us more customers, we would do it. But I can't, I don't have the exact numbers, but even the number of uh, medical licenses in the last few years has just declined. It's just plummeting. And that's where, where people say, if I'm going to open a new store, why would I open it for something that's just declining? It doesn't make much business sense. But again, if it was something that we could do, we will do. We'll offer any discounts that are allowed. You know, we see some groups offering them to, to veterans and those things. But under our understanding through regulations, that you have to allow it to everybody. And it's not allowed is really what it is. So allowed to everyone means I, it, the things like you do where you say buy one, get one exactly. half off or something like exactly. that. Exactly. So yes. It's in, but, and does the product that you sell help um, meet the needs of people who have, um, is it strictly recreational product or people with anxiety or people with nausea or people with other things? So the, the difference between recreational and medical is that some of the dosing is higher. So you can get a 10 milligram gummy for a medical or in the amount of cannabis that they can purchase is a higher amount. We are regulated to only sell five milligram gummies. That's what the state regulates. So that's all we could do. So if someone came in and they wanted to get their need, they, you know, you'd buy a 100 milligram pack, which is 20 gummies, and maybe you'd eat two of them rather than eating one 10 milligram. The pricing is the same. The, 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 the strength of the cannabis is the same. It's just the dosage in the amount that is different in the medical side. Thank you. Yeah, I was curious about that. So with the medical, I mean, I think that's the, you know, the sad part. It's it the, the, you know, the, the laws uh, have prevented it, you know, made it hard for folks like yourself to, you know, enter into the medical. But it's sad for the patients because, you know, they're not able to utilize it. And there's other deficiencies with the medical marijuana that, that people don't, don't go for, for, for something as simple as you can't have a loan, a license to carry right. if you have a medical marijuana card. CDL licenses, all so of those things. CDL, apply. there's all kinds of things that you're punished for. And that's why that it. market so, has declined um, and people have just so that's probably opted why to go into so the recreational market. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I think there were a lot, many stores that opened initially as medical stores, but have in communities that only allowed medical have now expanded that, to that recreational. The, Some do both. That was the it, crack into the that, that was the crack in the door that allowed them. Right. right. Um, Avery, do you have any other questions? I do not. It was already asked. Okay, mm -hmm. and I think. I think I've got all my questions answered, so we're all good. Oh, go ahead. You didn't do a traffic study, but I, do you have knowledge of? We do. We we, we did one years ago. Um, uh, I think it's I think it's gone up a little bit. Forty nine thousand. I think it's sixty four thousand a day. Um, it's more than what we did when we initially permitted that building for a car wash and we're using right. some of those numbers for trips right. and those things and we feel like we, we come underneath the trip count that was allotted for the car wash so we feel we felt that it wasn't something that was needed at this time if it's something that the planning board wants us to do we can absolutely do it. it's not a problem 
I think actually that your location in the bridge planning where they're yeah, talking the about having this right. little <laughs> little side road, you're actually still on the highway. It, they have to give you long driveways, but you're not in that little side right. thing. You're the after local it. Access access road. Local access road. Yeah, mm -hmm. your your right. location is after it. Yeah, and we feel that our location uh, is probably one of the better locations that's being allotted in the town of Bourne with the traffic studies and, and that kind of stuff. We feel that we're, you know, that that's going to be probably one of the most successful stores in Bourne. And that's important for you to think about as well because, you know, it's a partnership and, and you know, the better we do, the better the town does. Um, okay, no other questions? All right, so the board will be interviewing applicants over today and tomorrow. Okay, can I close uh, with the At the thing? end of the day tomorrow, we'll determine the next steps because we have six applicants, so we'll kind of feel out like where we are. Um, administration will be contacting each of the applicants when the board has um, decided who we will be talking with for HCA agreements. Okay, can Thank I just... I have a little bit of a closing statement, if that's okay. Sure. Okay. Um, as I said, you, you kind of know who we are, but I'm going to give you a little summary of, of, of who we are. I'd like to just close by telling you who Cape Boy Cannabis is and who we aren't. We are not a group who just put their company together in the last few months to fit the town of Bourne scoring model. Cape Boy has always been 100% woman-owned business since our inception over six years ago. We're not a group who's just looking to put a store up in a community they may have never been to or know nothing about. We're not a group who just signed some paperwork with a realtor to hold a piece of property. We own our pre property and we care about it. We're not a group who's been shopping around to add some local person to their group so that they can just check a box. We're from here and born. As I've said, Stephen and I graduated from <coughs> the Bourne School Systems. Lori and I chose to live here and raise our family here. Not only do we live here, but we've been a part of this community. Whether it be through youth sports like Bourne Lacrosse, Canal Youth Hockey, or Bourne Community Boating, which I was one of the founding board members of, and we donated one of the first sailboats to the program. I've also sat on one of the school superintendent search committees for the town of Bourne. We are members of this community. We're also not a group who has no experience in the cannabis industry. We run a very successful store in Carver, Mass. We are a company that does what we say, and that's who Cape Boy Cannabis is. Now that I've told you who we are, let me just touch on how we got here. We were involved in the first go around of getting cannabis sales in Bourne in 2018, when it was approved and then when the ban was reimposed. At that time, we decided to back away from Bourne and look at other communities, and that's when we went to Carver. After letting Bourne see, after letting Bourne see there was no ill effect on the towns that allow cannabis sales, we decided it was time to come back to the Bourne. <coughs> and in the spring of 2023, Lori sponsored an article to bring it back to Bourne Town Meeting. At that town meeting, we fell a little short. And, and rather than just throw it on the fall town meeting and bring a few more people with us, we decided to take a different approach. We decided to talk to those who were concerned and see if we could work together to come to a compromise. We spent the next six months speaking to you, the Board of Selectmen, working with the Planning Board and any other group who wanted to discuss how to do this correctly. And through that process, we were able to make people more comfortable with cannabis sales, and we won at the next town meeting. What I'm telling you is we're not someone who just showed up an interest in this in the last few months. We've been a part of this since the very beginning. We, we want to partner with the town and the community to deliver what people what we told the people we would do and for what the people voted for. That's why we believe that we are the right group to be a successful partner with the Town of Bourne. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to do our own ratings like we did the last time. Just do your own thoughts and your own Anybody ratings. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Take the stash. Yeah, it's, um, we worked it out with a grant through the state and through Carver Cares. Um, Megan Quirk, as, as I said, is the director up there. Um, she comes in the store. Early, and we hold these little pop-ups where she talks to customers about it. We, you know, that's, we're never going to get a 
and anybody under 21 coming into our store, it's through diversion is how kids get in. Yeah. We can do anything we can do to help with that as well. Thank you. So um, our next um, is going to be at 1 o'clock. So um, take a motion to um, recess until 1 p.m. So yes. move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Oh. <sighs>